One of the most incredible travel experiences that I have ever had was spending 10 days on a guided small group tour of Egypt. However, there were a few factors that were not deal breakers for me personally, but they might be for you. In today's video, I'll be running through 10 things you should be aware of before deciding to travel to Egypt. The first thing to know if you are considering a trip to Egypt would be that it can be quite difficult to breathe for several reasons. There's the heat, heavy pollution, smog, and dust in the major cities like Cairo that can make it quite difficult to feel your best. And one of the biggest culture shocks that I had while traveling Egypt was the smoking. There is a ton of smoking and very few restrictions on where you can and can't smoke, which can really impact a dining experience if you are sensitive to smoke like I am. And then there are the cats. If you are someone who has intense allergies to cats, you may want to reconsider your travel to Egypt because there are truly cats everywhere. I know this sounds extreme, but do you remember that TV commercial where the guy is like dying and his eyes are puffy and there's tears streaming down his face and then he's like, It's just allergies. This was spot on because if you have allergies, you know that they are no joke. There are cats and cat hair everywhere. So if you are someone that suffers from strong cat allergies, this could be a pretty miserable trip. It's also good to know that Egypt in general is going to be quite overstimulating and intense. It can be quite exhausting if you do identify as an introvert. You likely already know to expect tourist crowds and are likely prepared to arm yourself against harassment from market vendors. But then combine this with the traffic, the honking, and the fact that Egyptians tend to communicate rather passionately and loudly and with many, many gestures. It can all be a little bit draining, which might not be ideal if you are looking to come home from your travel feeling refreshed. You can also consider staying a few days after your tour to just hit up one of the beach destinations in Egypt. I ended up spending about a week in Hurghada at a five-star luxury all-inclusive resort and it only cost me about $50 a night. It was extremely relaxing and a great way to refresh before going home from the trip. Something else to think about when choosing to take an Egypt tour would be the jam-packed days and the early mornings. If you do not want to wake up before sunrise, and then as for the crowds, yes, the main sites are going to be very crowded with many, many tourists, which you probably already know. But what I didn't expect and found quite disappointing was other parts of the trip that ended up being just as crowded as the major sites, since the tours all go to the same places. A portion of the trip involved several days on a Nile River cruise boat, which was super cool and many tours include a few nights on a boat and you will love it, but you will want to know what to expect. And something that I did not expect was that the docking areas have a dozen ships lined up side by side. They end up being connected, so you have to walk through everyone else's ship to get to your own or you end up dealing with people walking through your ship at all hours of the day and night if you are one of the boats that is closest to the shore. Like many travelers, I do not like crowds or jam-packed itineraries or lack of sleep. But Egypt has been on the top of my bucket list for as long as I can remember and it was so, 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 so worth it. Let us know down in the comments what country is top of your bucket list. A big reason an Egypt tour might not be for you is because it just might not fit your budget. You can find many great deals online for Egypt tours and I'll link to Tour Radar where I got my entire Egypt trip for under $1,000 with a 50% off deal. Unfortunately, when it comes to these Egypt tours, the price that you see and pay upfront is often not going to be the whole cost. Read the fine print as entrance fees may or may not be included in your package and everything that you will want to see is going to have an entrance fee. Even if these fees are included, you'll often find additional fees to upgrade and get the full experience at a site, such as seeing the tomb of King Tut. Bathrooms are also going to cost you at most tourist sites, and unfortunately, they are usually not very pleasant. Definitely carry your own hand sanitizer and toilet paper. Also expect to tip. Tip for everything. Big tipping culture. And here's the kicker. There is a 26% tax and service fee applied to many goods and services, including your hotel stay. And while most of us are used to paying some form of tax, 26% is a pretty hefty fee that you will need to account for in your budget. 
It's also good to be aware that you will likely experience some form of mild corruption, such as having to pay for upgrades that you don't want. These can be frustrating because even if the cost is small, there are some things that you may not want to support, such as the camel rides. An example of a paid upgrade that tourists often have no choice in paying for and accepting is taking a horse and buggy to the temple of Edfu. No taxis and no Ubers are going to take you up to this temple. It's an unwritten rule that you will need to pay and take this horse and buggy. If you are on a tour, the price is likely already factored in. Another element to consider if you are planning to travel to Egypt would be the risk of food poisoning. The food is amazing, by the way, it is so, so good. But getting food poisoning from the food or from the water is extremely common. Each member of our group was sick from something they ate or drank at least once during the 10 day trip. A few people were sick multiple times. If you do have a sensitive stomach and are taking a short trip, keep this in mind as you may end up spending a significant portion of the trip unwell. And here is a big one. It is very, very hot. I remember being at Abu Simbel when people started screaming and shouting for help. It was an American tour group and an older man had passed out. And then I saw this happen about half a dozen more times during the trip. Your body doesn't have a lot of time to adjust, especially if you travel from a cool climate and jump right into full day excursions. While Egypt is generally considered safe for tourists, depending on who you ask, there are going to be risks to traveling there as there are risks to traveling anywhere. Stay informed on the current situation, check any government advisories, and then follow local advice while you are on the ground. Egypt does have a history of conflict, but I personally find that the heat, the potential for food poisoning, and then also the roads driving would be the things that had me most concerned. You'll also want to trust your gut, and if you don't feel comfortable doing something, don't do it. Some of the safety regulations, especially for popular activities like scuba diving and going on a hot air balloon, were a little bit too relaxed for my comfort level. I still did them and everything was fine, but it was, it was a little sketchy. This video is certainly not to bash Egypt as a tourist destination, and as I have said several times through this video, I absolutely loved my trip. This is more to inform you of some of the things that I think are important to be aware of if you are planning to travel there, such as the tax, because perhaps an extra 26% on your hotel stay is not in your budget. I'd love to know your thoughts on traveling to Egypt down in the comments below, and then I also hope you'll subscribe to join us back here for more travel tips and hacks next week. Thank you for watching. Bye.